On the panel we have today uh, two of my role models, Fadi Ghandour and Joey Ito, and two of the new emerging role models, Muhammad Mecca and Brian. Uh, I'm going to start uh, for, with a question to you, Fadi. And I'm just going to dive right into it. And please, it's going to be a very engaging discussion, so feel free to, 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 to jump in. Fadi, what keeps you motivated? Where do you get this energy from? Um, I don't know, swimming. <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> Basketball. Uh, what keeps me motivated? Uh, I don't know, really. I'm, I'm, I'm just passionate about, uh, I mean, since we're talking entrepreneurship here, obviously. Uh, I, 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 um, being an entrepreneur, having gone through the uh, process of uh, building a business and knowing how difficult it is to actually build a business, I uh, developed a passion for supporting entrepreneurs and for uh, uh, helping people establish their businesses. And uh, uh, I, I've, mentorship, for instance, is, is a value that I had valued uh, uh, personally tremendously. I, it was lacking in the early days of my establishment of the business, so I, I understand how much, how much more how important uh, mentorship is and much more important than actual uh, uh, capital or, or money. So, I mean, this, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just, I mean, a simple process of appreciating and uh, having, uh, if you want, a kick out of seeing somebody establish a business and actually making it. I mean, but surely you must get tired. I mean, you're on the chairman of, of WAMDA, you're CEO of Aramex, and I send you an email and I almost get a response very quickly and, and so just how do you do it and I'm, I'm gonna ask Joy the same question you just work long hours so hard work yeah I mean it's there is I mean there's no other answer you get I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of my friends here would tell you he doesn't answer as fast as, as he answers you <laughs> but that's because you are you so uh, but I try to get yes I mean I am practically working uh, 16 hours a day. So swim in the morning, hard work, and keep yourself motivated. So I want to take you back a bit 30 years ago when you first started Aramex, because I was talking to you the other day when you were in Beirut walking, and I asked you, how did you when did you decide you want to focus on Aramex? And you were running multiple businesses, you had a restaurant, uh, you had a trucking company. So tell us a bit about the schizophrenic entrepreneurship life and when you decide to focus? So I actually, believe it or not, started three businesses exactly at the same time, four businesses uh, exactly at the same time as I was starting Aramex. Uh, I had, um, uh, you know, Aramex took the most time, but I, we started uh, a few, a couple of years later, a uh, fast food restaurant in Jordan doing pizzas and I actually worked in the kitchen at lunchtime and in the evenings. Uh, we launched, uh, believe it or not, an industrial cleaning uh, company, so detergents. We were, that failed miserably very early on. And we started Brinks, which is the transportation of cash uh, on delivery, which I just exited 30 years later. So it does take sometimes 30 years to exit a business. It's okay. So don't, if you're not, you didn't exit the first five years, there will be a time for an exit. Uh, so eventually, it's, um, uh, Aramex was happening and uh, uh, it was the natural place to actually focus on uh, because it required a lot of traveling, establishing an operation in every single country that we were uh, needed to operate in in the Arab world. And uh, you know how difficult it is. If, imagine how difficult it is today. It was a hundred times more difficult to establish a business anywhere in the Arab world 30 years ago. So uh, legal structures were practically impossible without finding a local partner, a local sponsor. All these media cities and special economic zones did not exist until maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago. So uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was really hard, uh, uh, hard work. It was putting your legs on the ground and going and knocking on doors and finding partners and finding people that are interested to, uh, to actually believe in a small business. Our biggest challenge in the very early days in Aramex is you would go to somebody who, uh, who you wanted to partner with in, in a country in the region and they tell you, you, you know, DHL is here, why should we do business with you or your robot? I mean, it's, so you, that was, that was just knocking on doors, knocking on doors until one opens. Group. Which is still the same thing today, so I mean, it's... Yeah, so the challenges still exist today, much lighter, which means, you know, instead of 
less complaining and more doing is is the message and more action more 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 aggressive complaining execution. is a waste of time so the more you complain the more time you're wasting from actually doing your 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 business Great. so i'm going to move to joey and building on on fadi found the time and he needed to focus on rmx in your case and it's something you talk to, you talk a lot about this power of pull and in, in your various points of life you were able to build something very quickly and execute very fast in an agile way by, by building on resources. You've put yourself in a position where you can basically execute on almost practically everything for someone who's a two college dropout, two times dropout, leading the best lab in the world. It's kind of ironic, but you've done it with your group of friends. Tell us more about the power of pull and how you've used it in your life. Okay, so <clears throat> the idea behind power of pull is, it, it comes from a book by John C. Lee Brown who ran Xerox Park. <clears throat> but the idea is in the old days, when things were more about capital and things you would stock, you know, intellectual property, money, people, and centrally command it like a typical traditional war, you know. And, um, and there were like s smart people in R&D and smart people in management. And now that we have massive change, um, unpredictability, complexity, first of all, the people in the top don't usually know what's going on. And secondly, what you think are assets, like money and people and lines of code, are actually liabilities to agility. And so the more stuff you have, the slower you can pivot. And that's why entrepreneurs actually have a lot of advantage over big companies, because you can, ch you can shift course, you can change your product without having to fire a thousand people or to flush a hundred patents down the toilet. So, so that's one piece. And the power of pull is really, instead of learning a computer language 10 years before you're going to use it, learn it, pick the best language that you need right now, because actually the languages are easier to learn. Innovation is cheaper now, so you don't have to stock a bunch of money to try something. The minimum viable product is so cheap that you might as well start thinking about it after you need it. And to be more extreme, um, I often say that I'm no longer a futurist. I don't believe in futurists because futurists are usually wrong. The plans are usually wrong. And so it costs so much money to predict the future and prepare for the future, and it's usually wrong. It's, I'm a Nowist, which is kind of Buddhist of me. But a Nowist is somebody who is prepared for anything and executes after you realize what the problem is. Because most of the things that happen, good or bad, you can't predict anymore. So it's better to be ready for anything than it is to be prepared for a particular thing in general. So, so, uh, so being first to market is not necessarily best. <laughs> it's not necessarily best, but being first to market after the market's ready, it's, the t it's timing, right? But, but, but being first to market is slightly different. I think that's okay. I think winner takes all and first to market is a huge advantage. But, but what I mean is like in Japan, we prepared for the earthquake government prepared tons, but after the earthquake happened, I knew nothing, but I built a network of Geiger counter um, manufacturing um, experts. I brought experts, and within a week I knew more than the government. Within a month I had deployed a hundred volunteers, and a year and a half later we have the biggest data set in the world of open data, and it's, it's a huge movement. And, and we killed the government's plans with no money, within weeks and all of the government stuff failed and they had spent billions on, on planning and, 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 and all that. So to me, power of pull is, is uh, having the agility to move. And, and this is what, you know, if nothing else, that's what we have as entrepreneurs, right? And so, so that, the, and agility is really important. So to, to, to talk about, like just specifically about product, I mean, even if you have weekly product meetings, the, entrepreneur, the, the engineers will cry when you say, I'm going to dump the code, we're going to go this way. Imagine if you're a big company and you spent three years deploying something. I mean, YouTube was a dating site with video when it launched in 2005. And it didn't work and they pivoted very quickly because they said, hey, a dating site with video isn't working. But if it were a big company and they spent three years doing it, they said, let's try a little longer. Let's try a little longer. And it would have sucked for a long time and they would have cost a lot of money. So, so the power pull is really kind of pull the resources as you need it to be very agile. So five-year projection plan, dump those for startups, doesn't work. So when I look at an entrepreneur, I'm, I do care about the trajectory, where are they headed? But the specific plan, I know, like there's no company that's been successful, except maybe Amazon, that looks anything like when it started, right? YouTube was a dating site for video. Um, uh, you know, Fa PayPal was a mobile app. Um, Facebook was a, a dating site for college students. You know, and it's, it's, it's somewhat similar, but you know, but it's not a dating site, but it's related to that yeah. problem, right? Um, but, but, it, but they all move a lot. And so what you want to figure out is, uh, is this entrepreneur capable of a wide variety of pivots? Do they have the scrappiness and the ability to pull the stuff that they need and get rid of the stuff that they don't need?